camera's ready. All right, go ahead. Uh, it's a big, big, big week for the team. Uh, how important is it to get at least four points from these next two games? Una semana importante para el equipo. ¿Qué tan importante es sacar eh, al menos cuatro puntos de estos dos partidos? Eh, una semana muy importante y, y bueno, creo que en nuestra mente están los seis puntos. Eh, vimos esta semana que sí sacamos un punto de visitantes, pero eh, la tabla está muy apretada. Los otros equipos también están ganando, entonces nosotros necesitamos ganar todos todos los partidos que, que nos quedan. It's a very important week, uh, but I think six points are on our minds. Uh, we saw last week, our last game, we were able to get a point on the road, but the, the Eastern Conference table is, is very tight, so we want to try and win all our, all our games. Do you pay attention to the table? Siempre estás viendo la, la tabla? Bueno, al menos yo sí, porque me importa el equipo, me importa eh, el rival que tenemos enfrente, y y en base a eso siempre tratar de buscar ganar de acuerdo a, a, a las condiciones del partido. Uh, I, I do because I, you know, I really care about the team and, and I'm always looking at the opponent who we're about to face. Um, so um, yeah, I pay attention to it and uh, you know, think we have a, a quality team. The y'all's last meeting against Red Bulls, I think was probably for 80 something minutes the best game y'all played this season. Um, what do you remember about the game? What was working well against them that you can apply Wednesday? Dice en el primer partido contra Red Bulls, quizás fue los primeros 80 minutos fueron muy buenos, quizás el mejor del del año. ¿Qué te acuerdas de ese partido y qué se puede sacar para para este partido? Sí, la verdad por ahí tuvimos la oportunidad también de ver algunos videos de ese partido de lo bien que hicimos. Eh, y, y bueno, trataremos de repetir eh, la presión, el trabajo en equipo, la posición eh, y, y estar muy atentos a, a esta vez eh, no cometer errores. Yes, we've had a chance to, to look at some of the film from that game and see the things that we did well, um, the, the pressure we applied, just all working together. Um, so those are things that we're going to try and repeat in this game. Um, and then just try not to make any mistakes. That last game, it seemed like you and Louise were up top as forwards. Can you describe you and Louise's role against Red Bulls? En ese partido jugaste junto con Luis, con dos delanteros. Si puedes describir tu rol. Bueno, la idea era fijar un poco a los tres de atrás con con las características de Luis y, y mis características, eh, buscar los espacios a sus espaldas y, y con eso eh, liberar a, a un jugador de en medio eh, teniendo nosotros a, a tres contra, contra nosotros dos. Well, the idea was to look at their back three and try to take advantage of Luis and I's characteristics um, to be able to run in behind the defense and then leaving another player uh, free in the middle. So just trying to, to use our, our strengths against those three. What have y'all been working on in training this week to prepare for Red Bulls specifically and not uh, have rest? En, en que has, has estado entrenando esta semana uh, el equipo para, para este partido? Bueno, realmente lo que más hemos tratado de enfocarnos esta semana es en la recuperación. Tuvimos un partido bastante complicado el sábado contra un gran equipo y, y lo mismo va a pasar el día de mañana. Un gran equipo Eh, vamos a necesitar eh, mucho esfuerzo de, de todos los compañeros, los que inician, los que les toque entrar de cambio. Y, y bueno, eh, basamos mucho eso eh, esta semana y obviamente también con videos y con, con muy poco dentro de la cancha eh, las cosas tácticas que, que podemos hacer para este partido. The main thing we focused on this week is has been recovery uh, from the last game uh, on Saturday because it was, uh, you know, a difficult game against a very good team, uh, and the same thing is true tomorrow. So we're going to need everyone's uh, effort tomorrow. The, you know, whether you're starting or on the bench, we need uh, good efforts from from everyone on the team. And then, you know, also we've been able to watch videos and look at some things tactically that we we want to do. But um, yeah, it's been recovering and, and getting ready.
Me sigue sorprendiendo tu memoria. <laughs> so I have a good memory. Uh, there aren't many home games left in the regular season. Which parts of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, playing in that environment, do you look forward to the most? De que, que solo quedan unos pocos partidos en casa, eh, que son, son los aspectos o las cosas que, sí. que te gusta de jugar en Mercedes Benz. Sí, si no mal recuerdo, creo que quedan cinco partidos en casa. Y, y bueno, lo que más me gusta es el apoyo de, de los fans que en todo momento siempre nos han brindado su apoyo. Es un apoyo incondicional. Eh, vayamos ganando empatando o perdiendo, siempre están para nosotros, para alentarnos y, y eso es una cosa muy especial que nosotros sentimos dentro de la cancha. Si no estoy equivocado, creo que tenemos cinco home games left y la cosa que me gusta más es el apoyo de nuestros fans, el apoyo incondicional en todos los momentos, si estamos ganando, perdiendo o perdiendo. Creo que todos sentimos ese apoyo en el campo y estamos muy agradecidos por eso. Have you and Joseph had discussions about the starting role and about uh, you maybe taking that role from him as the season's kind of gone on? Has tenido conversaciones con Joseph sobre el, el puesto titular de, del número 9 y de, de ti posiblemente eh, pues quitando su, su sitio y, y los dos jugando. Mm, la verdad no, la verdad todo lo que hemos platicado ha sido para, para ayudarnos, para para que el que esté jugando eh, le vaya bien porque este equipo es una familia y siempre queremos que le vaya bien al otro, sabemos que si a un compañero le va bien, al equipo le va bien y, y nada, no, no ha habido ningún problema, eh, tengo una gran relación con él, eh, es una gran persona y un gran jugador. Uh, honestly, no. Uh, all the conversations I've had with Joseph has just been about, um, you know, whoever's playing that that they, you know, that they do well, uh, because this this group is a family, and we want whoever's playing to um, to play well, because ultimately we want the team to to play well and to succeed. Um, so Joseph, he's a great player. He's a great person, um, and yeah, I have a very good relationship with him, and, and that's not something we've talked about. All right. Thanks, Ronaldo. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Yep. All right, questions for Gonzalo. I <laughs> uh, saw that Hizetu and Gutman uh, weren't training today. Are they available for Wednesday? Yeah, so precautionary uh, uh, on Gutman, his first 90 minutes after, you know, uh, a long-term injury, so it's precautionary. We, we always assess every player when, when it's condensed fixture. Uh, the day of the game, so the level of involvement for everyone will be assessed tomorrow when they report in the morning with an extra day uh, of resting a little bit. Today was a bit more of a region, so so we will assess everyone tomorrow and then we'll make a decision on lineup and many things. Folks are asking about uh, Heinemann too. If you have an update on his recovery, not yet. Still, still not uh, uh, not up to the level where he starts his individualized sessions on the field. So. Yeah, we'll have more of an update probably in a few weeks. Uh, your last game against Red Bulls, I thought for 80-something minutes, was probably one of the better games that y'all played this season. What did you do well that you can apply to Wednesday? Well, for me, it's being truthful to our identity. Try to play. Try to play. And yes, at times, you know, we know the reputation of, of Red Bulls. They're a very good uh, team on the high pressure. They, are, they like to press at super high intensity all together, trying to block all the channels for for passing lanes and stuff like that. And we just try to do it better than them uh, on, on the build-up. And uh, that's the intention that we will have again. Uh, and we'll try to be truthful to who we are as, as a team, uh, as much as they are going to be truthful to who they are as a team. And that's the battle you always go in these type of games. So for me, it's just continue with the way we are playing. I feel like we are doing a very good job in the build-up phase. And then in the middle third, also disrupting midfield, trying to move the ball faster side to side and progressing the ball forward a little bit faster. In that sense, a bit more direct, not meaning that longer passes or playing just 50-50 balls, but more direct in the sense that one or two passes and then we should have uh, a, a break, uh, uh, two, at least two lines of pressure. And in that way, I think we can unbalance 
teams very well. And the little thing that maybe we need to improve a little bit is in the final third, our attacking movements, our numbers inside the box. Even though I felt that Cincinnati was good in certain moments, we still can put more pressure, more numbers, more runs inside the 18 to create a little bit more chaos in the opponent once they're defending inside the box. Is it tough to try to, because you have three games in eight days, tough to try to balance workloads knowing you, you've got to get points? Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, you're, you're absolutely right. It's hard, but also we have to be smart. And at the same time, we have to be aggressive in our lineup choices and uh, our, our uh, game changers on the bench, you know. So we have to, we have to be smart, but at the same time, be aggressive and, and, and go game by game at times, you know. So as much as we think Columbus is going to be a great opponent and a very important match, now the most important bar match is, is Red Bulls and we have to, to play at the best in this game. How do you feel about Juan Oprada's ability to handle the kind of pressure that Red Bulls are going to be applying to him? Yeah, I have I have no no doubts about Purata. I think he's very strong mentally. He seems to be a very confident guy. He knows when he does well, he does when he probably doesn't do well. And he's the first one to raise his hand and say, Yeah, I probably made a mistake but but that ability tells you a lot about the security that he has in his in his game and I, I'm sure it's going to be an anomaly in his performances and he's going to come back to be the normal Purata that we all love here, a professional, a solid center back that provides a lot of security to our, our back line, but also a guy that stands up a little bit as a leader in the back line. So uh, I have no, no doubts about that. Alan Franco, is he... I know he got stepped on or rolled an ankle or something. Is he okay? Yeah, yeah. He trained well, okay. Again, we will evaluate him also tomorrow. Let's see that uh, sometimes those little lingerings in the dense fixture. So we'll assess tomorrow early in the morning. We'll talk to them and we'll see who's uh, the level of involvement of every player we have. There were uh, quite a few crosses against Cincinnati that were uh, sent to the back post and there wasn't anybody there. Um, was was there supposed to be somebody there, or were the crosses just overhit, or the tactics behind that? Yes, uh, that's a little bit what I was saying. That's okay. where we can do better, having more numbers, but also in the areas where we want to attack. So obviously, we always, we normally try to attack three areas inside the box, and the three have to be filled out. One of that is the is the far post. You saw that in the cross from Caleb Wiley and the big save mm -hmm. for their goalkeeper at the end of the first half with Luis Araujo. That's mm -hmm. where you want your wingers or your opposite wing backs to be on the far post, and you want to attack that. So. We have always different areas uh, with different players inside the box. So yes, there should have been someone there a few times, uh, and, and yeah, we, that's that's what I was telling you. That's where we need to do a little bit better. What are the other two areas? Sorry, the other two areas that you're talking about. Well, another two that <laughs> when you ask me about those, I will say. But uh, I mean, it's not secrets. I mean, near yeah. post, far post, and a little bit of cutbacks. I mean, it's normal, normal stuff that you see many teams just attack. Uh, but uh, it's just, it's just for me, it's, it's common sense, right? You have to attack those three areas in a, in a very aggressive way. It's not just being there, but being there, one, one half a yard. Uh, ahead of the opponent, that last, last little sprint, change of direction, a little bit of deception movement to, to really unbalance and again create create unbalance in their back line in those areas mm -hmm. is pivotal to have success in the final third. So I think that's the little areas we can we can improve the decision making in the crosses, things that we always talk in the film and, and I, I can see the progress already there. I felt like l last game we try everything. We try shots from distance, two crossbars, well two, two posts. Mm -hmm. uh, one of those was a goal, a couple early crosses for Marcelino in the first half that the goalkeeper went on the ground, uh, primacy zones, transition moments. So we try to use every little moment to, to to attack the goal in different ways and, and that variation uh, I felt it was very positive from the last game. It seemed like uh, Marcy and Tiago were both getting uh, into the area right uh, on top of the, the penalty arc, uh, zone 14, whatever you want to call it. Was that uh, intentional or just kind of how um, the game flowed and allowed them to, to set up? It was somehow intentional, somehow also, like in that specific play, in the first goal, for example, is Luis Araujo sprinting inside the box. That attracts the attention of the center mid, and then he 
found Tiago with a little bit more open space to shoot. So that's what I'm talking about. A couple more runs, unselfish runs at times. Maybe Luis wants to score the goal, but he will attract someone, he will pass, and the next guy will be free. The same inside the box. At times, someone will run near post, and then maybe he wants to score the goal, but he will attract two players, and then someone uh, will score the goal from the cutback. We saw that against New York Red Bulls, the last goal of Dom, you know, Joseph Martinez sprinting the near post and then the cutback came to Dom and he scored the goal. So things like that for me, at times we talk a lot about tactics and formations and attacking half spaces, primacy songs, all that is very good. Mm -hmm. But uh, I challenge my players with what about just playing a sprint, playing a sprint in behind, just play a simple wall pass and sprint inside the box to create something, some movement, and from there you start just to see what the game gives you. And, and then from there you start to create in the final third because it, every, every, not everything is as you said on the tactics boards and moving pieces here and there. At times it, it needs a little bit of effort, play in a sprint, be more dynamic and just create a space, gaps, and occupy different spots and rotations and all that, uh, you know, is something that you know, we won't teach in a tactic sports. It's something the players need to see and adjust in every play. Every play is different and they have to adjust where to attack, how to attack the space, how to attack the box. And that's where I think the players, I already see a little bit of improvement in that. I think on that goal that we're talking about, uh, Marcelino was out wide and Luis underlapped. Um, and Thiago kind of filled that space in zone 14. Um, what kind of uh, processes do the the two uh, attacking midfielders go through to decide when to, to go out wide like that and try to get overloads? Um, is it just ball side when that, when that happens? Yes, it was at times it's just a, a, a switches of play. For example, Luis takes the corner on the left side and then he stays more central. So then Marcelino maybe stayed out wide because he knows that we need someone as a winger mm -hmm. creating uh, width. So then maybe uh, Luis was there, maybe it was a throwing, and then from there, Marcel running behind into the corner, then uh, Luis came on beneath, that actually what happened in that goal. So it was a throwing, and then Marcel run into the corner, and, and Luis over on their lap. So at times he's in the flow of the game, they, they change, but what I like is they know which areas they have to occupy. So what I don't want is two players in the same spot. That's what I don't want. What I want them is to be well organized, whether at times he's Luis inside, Marcelino outside, Thiago inside, sometimes even Caleb Wiley inside and underlapping from there and going to the primacy zone. So, so as long as they understand and recognize the spaces, and at times it's not as clear as we always said in the tactics sports again, because the opponent shifts, the opponent changes the shape or something, they have to see uh, where are the gaps and adjust to that and that's a game that's football uh, was Santi man marking uh, Lucha no 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 not at all uh, I oh, think okay. uh, I don't think I ever said someone to, to man mark anyone I, I don't recall that but uh, yes having a kind of a reference on okay when when the number 10 for the position is in this area, this guy takes care of him. When he goes to a different area, he passes the mark to this guy, and then you take this guy. So we are more sonal, even though once the play is on one side, then yes, we have to finish man for man, but not man marking the whole field. So that makes sense. So it's sonal until the point where we have to make the challenge, the tackles, the, the 1v1 duel, then yes, it's your, this, is, this is your guy. So mostly, uh, Acosta was operating in, in Santi Sosa's area. Mm -hmm. That's why he was closer to him. Did it seem like Santi was maybe getting pulled out wide at times, kind of vacating the central a, area? A little bit. That was a little bit the correction we, we okay. tried to, 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 to do. At times, you know, uh, Santi was very good in this game in particular. I felt like he was occupying very well that area. And at times he went too wide, but at times he solved the situation. And maybe someone else, that's the thing of playing 1 6 and 2 tens versus 1 6 and maybe an 8. So the 8 can cover that little gap in the middle. But we felt that with the back three, also a center back can step up in, in there. So, so covering that. So that's the flexibility that the back five gives you. At times, yes, the center mid goes outside. Center back covers that space if it is needed. If not, he can stay in the back three, back five. So a little flexible tactics in there, but mostly I want Santi more in the central areas. Uh, Tiago's goal against Cincinnati, it was nominated for goal of the week. Is that the type of quality you expected or hoped for when he joined the club? Yes, for sure. That's exactly what we saw from Thiago. And more than his goal, because his goal is shiny, is excellent, it's, it's a fantastic goal for sure. Uh, but is the effort, the willingness to play. He was 
you know, always open to play. He's not afraid of playing the ball in tough areas. Uh, and that's what we love about Thiago. He does a lot of effort on and off the ball to be successful and for the team to be successful. That That's what we want. At times he will score goals, at times he will put assists, at times he wants to score goals or assists, but his workload is always very high. And and that's what we saw when we were scouting uh, Thiago, when I start to see Thiago a little bit on the film. and. I think that's the level that he should be in every game. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.